Good morning, class. Take a seat because this is another branded academy video. This doesn't happen every day. Every new format, we try to keep up with the meta and explain a little bit about the differences and changes in branded. And today, in this very special episode of Branded Academy, we are looking at the Rage of the Abyss format. Azamina is joining the pool, Ubel is still strong, and Tenpai is going to get a huge boost with Mulchami, Fuaris, and Dominus Impulse. There's a lot of other Branded Academy videos in the series, so I'm going to put a link to the playlist. Go watch them. Take a learn, see how the deck evolved, and, you know, it's the best way to keep up with how to play Branded. Today, we're going to be doing three things. One, we are going to look at the deck list, and this is a template deck list that I feel like will be good in Rage of the Abyss and is something that I'm currently testing. Two, we're going to be looking at three different combo lines of how to play the deck. People have been asking me for combo videos, and I think for Branded, it's not usually as straightforward because Branded combos are usually five card combos. Every hand is a combo on its own, but I will show a few different lines that you should just keep in mind to end on. And you can see this card right here on the screen. This is something that I'm testing out against Tenpai, and I think that this is one of the best place to the best ways to play around Dimension Shifter versus Tenpai. So I'm going to be showing you how to pull off that line. Let's look at the list. So things are relatively standard, okay? 50 cards, no grass. I think grass is... I don't think it's necessary to play. I really don't think that grass is the best build out of what Branded has to offer. And I think you do want to keep your card count lower so you can see more side deck. I would also probably test out even lower than this, right? You can honestly play 45 because you're going to see so much side deck and the more cards you have in your deck, the less side deck you're going to see. Even though this deck is just like really, really good at going second. Three Albions is still relatively standard for me. I was testing out one. I think that the value of this with high spirits and the value of this searching branded fusion in more versatile ways is just too important since you only have one now. Three Aluber and two Cartesia. I always switch around like three Cartesia, two Aluber. You can definitely play two Aluber. I think that in 50, having six normal summons, which is Kit, two Quem, and Alubers, I think is fine. I would want to see Aluber if th that's the only card in my hand and if it's a top deck more than I would like to see Cartesia because this will get me to something. So this is why I play three Alubers and only two Cartesias. I do play one a Stellar and that sort of circumvent circumvents the fact that we're only playing two Cartesia because this is a great bridge to um, get to Cartesia and Quem. If you don't know how this works, you can look at the last Branded Academy video of the info format explaining how this card works within the deck. One Sero, one Tragedy, three Albaz. So, Gearing Puppet Nightmare is still going to be your best win condition, but in the two card combo, which in my opinion is the most optimal line and you will get to it a lot of the times, you don't even end on Puppet in the Graveyard. You do everything on the opponent's turn, I'll show you when we do the combo and then two Quem. Three Mulchami Fuaris, you want to draw into board breakers when you're going second. If you're going first, this card is a discard. That's basically it. You could, obviously, if you don't own the copy of the card, I would suggest probably replacing this with the Lore of Darkness and adding another Mercurier. I think that will be your best bet. It will serve the same purpose. You're going to draw additional cards and, and search. It's just going to be the best bang for your buck, and it's still like a very good staple. And this is still a question mark, I think, before we get into the format. One Kid, one Lube, one Mercurier, one Branded Fusion, one High Spirits. I don't want to open too many of the, these, and I don't want to play too many Bestials, because even though Ubel is going to be a meta deck, Snake Eyes Amina is also going to be a meta deck, and Bestials don't do a whole lot against that deck. One in red, one lost, three Eclipse, three opening, three Droplet, two Dark Ruler no more, just as an additional layer of board breakers, you don't need to play three because you already play thrust. One burial, one called by, one sark, three deployment, one talents, three thrust, one retribution, and one fusion duplication. I think that you could take out the two dark rulers, take out the Mulcharmies, and play 45. Just like that. With three eclipse, three droplet, three of this, and, and talents. You could drop to 45 very easily. 
if you feel like the deck is not consistent enough, I think that will be a very solid build to play regardless. Side deck, we have one of each bestial, and then we're playing the Fusion Parasite and Buster Blader Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. I think, and this might be my personal bias, I'm very scared of Tenpai. This deck does not necessarily play well into Tenpai and under Shifter. Like, if you get hit with Shifter and you don't open Thrust and something like a Dimensional Barrier, you're going to be in, in trouble. Because you might just lose on the spot. So, of course, you could play Dragoon, which is also solid, right? But the problem with Dragoon is that it can be killed. And Drago Stapelli is usually your line under Shifter, but it's just way, way not enough against Tenpai. So what I'm testing right now, and it's been proven to, to work, especially in a grindier game state, or if you do this on your opponent's turn somehow, is that Branded Fusion send this in Albaz, shuffle back, make this. If they don't have, and you put this in defense, if they don't have specifically like a Dark Hole, Regeki or Droplet, this stays on the field and you win. Now, is this a good enough gamble? Like, be better have it, right? They do play a lot of these outs. It's probably your best bet, in my opinion. And of course, we do back it up with Thrust, Eclipse, Deep Barriers, Imperms, Cosmics, like a lot of things that do work against Tenpai as well. So it's not only that, but this will be like, you don't want to end on Mirror Jade if you're under Shifter. If you're not under Shifter, just play the game. That's fine. This is why this card is here. And one should all drag in three Imperms is also for Tenpai. Also for Yubel going second. It's good to hit. It's very good to hit the Spirit. Good against Azamina cards. And I think it's a good way to play around Protoss, which is going to be like Ritual Beast is still going to be a, a good thing next format. D Barrier is the thrust target. Duster, three Cosmics, Masquerade for time, and the Buster Blader. x rec is pretty straightforward. Abelanetus, Titanic Led, Rinbrum, Stapelia, two MJ, two Grangnial, two Albion, Sanctifar, Furious, an amazing card. Quiridus is still here, Chimera, and Lubelia. Now that we've looked at the decklist, let's look at a few combo lines that I want people to be aware of, and uh, let's jump into it. Hey, by the way, if you like this video and want to support me in making more of these, just remember that you can use code GALZO5 across my many sponsors. Whether it's accessories, rare cards, or just singles, it helps way more than you think. And you can also join our free Discord community in the link in the description below. And if you want special treatment, become a YouTube member or a Twitch subscriber to get exclusive access into our members-only Discord channel and get an awesome badge as well. Now, for this first line, I want to do the one-card combo which is one and a half because you do need a discard, actually two discards, but it will mean that you only have access to either branded opening or a luber. It's not a line that I would usually just recommend in general, but sometimes it will happen and it's the most straightforward way to, like the simplest end board you can end on with branded. And I think it's important for people to know. <clears throat> so a luber, of course, grabs branded fusion, sends Lubelion and Albaz. Now, you would summon Albion here either way. The difference is, is that if you have two spells as discards, right? If you if you have like another two board breakers, you can access the Astellar line, right? So we'll look at that in a second. Now, Albion is gonna banish Albaz and Luber. To of course make Searing Dragon, discard, shuffle back, and we end on a Mirror Jade here. We tribute this, of course, we go for this. This is the very, very basic, basic line, right? And this will place us on the board. This. Now, you have a few problems here. In this line, you don't end on Albaz in the graveyard, which is crucial. It is crucial to end on Albaz in the graveyard. Okay, so this is why you don't go for something like in red. Theoretically, this line could be better if you just have branded banishment in your deck. 
and maybe that's a consideration because you could go banishment summon the albion infused with this to make uh, light and darkness dragon lord right that makes the one card combo better but the one card combo is not really something you do what i would do here is use albion to search for branded opening if you haven't started with it in the combo of course otherwise you would search for retribution and get two interruptions which is basically fine with a one card combo but here I would go for branded opening to make sure I do have Albez in the grave and gain some sort of momentum, go for a Quem here, and then dump the Albez. So what this makes are essentially three interruptions, right? Because you have a Mirror Jade that could send either a Rindbrum or anything else because you already have a Quem that can trigger. So you can already get, get follow up here right and then albaz is the second interruption because it will take care of a monster on your opponent's board which if it's a dark monster you can already make here right you already have another you have another card in hand because we started with the one less so you can already make something like borrowed furious and then trigger this get an additional negate so it basically turns a one card combo into potentially five interruptions, right? Depending on the matchup and depending on the target you're facing. But Mirror Jade resolves. Albaz takes a body off of the opponent's board, which is a dark monster, which every deck will play. And then you turn that into whatever you want. You turn it into a Stapelia and you turn that into a Furious, whatever you want. You can turn it into a Sanctifier. If you have a discard, which is Gimmick Puppet Nightmare, pretty straightforward. This is the one card combo. And this is why it's always important to have an Albaz in Grave. Let's look at the same line, but with spells in hand, right? Luber grabs Rand Fusion. And we will activate the Brand Fusion here. You just need two spells. We put in three, you just need two. And this is a four card hand, so we have an, an additional card in hand. Now, you do something a little bit different here. And you go for Albaz and a Stellar. Okay. You still fuse the same with Aluber and Albaz. And once you get to Lubelion, you discard a spell. And that way you can fusion summon into a Mirror Jade, of course. Now, on Res, a Stellar will trigger because you used a spell as cost. And then you send another spell to summon Cartesia. And now you get things rolling a lot better than the last combo, right? If you just have spells, because now we're going to be able to send um, Titanic Lad here. And we're basically going to be ending on a two card combo end board, but using just a Luber essentially. So end phase here, you're going to, you're not going to be grabbing Cartesia from the graveyard because we want it in the graveyard, but you are going to use Titanic like to summon Quem and dump an Albaz and then get in red. So now you have so many more interruptions. You get Mirror Jade activation, right? And you're going to be sending whatever you need. Then you can either special summon the Cartesia back or the Albaz for fusion. You, of course, have lines for tagging out with the Grand Guignol. And of course, you have Branded in red, which could be 10 different things. Like you could very easily just pop it from this place because once you activate the mirror jade you can bring this back fuse away make another one dump the puppet and then just use in red to make you can make it with this even which whatever honestly just keep the quam and then that's basically it you keep this for yourself you give this as a present to your opponent, and that's it. So this is the one card combo, but with spells in hand. Just two spells in hand, the rest of your hand doesn't matter. It's a Luber plus two spells, and it ends on like eight interruptions. It's very, very layered. Your interruptions, this is what's so unique about Branded, your interruptions will evolve over time as you evolve your end board, because you end on something, but it grows on your opponent's turn. Now. I want to go to the two card combo, which is very similar to what we ended on here. It's basically the same result, but you don't need to access a Stellar. 
You just need a Luber or a way to a Luber and Cartesia or a way to Cartesia without giving up your normal summon. So it could be Cartesia and opening. It could be a Luber and deployment. It's basically the, the two sides of the same coin. We always start with summoning the Cartesia. If you're wondering by any chance why these artworks are here, these are the new white story complete file collection artwork. They got alt arts because Konami loves, uh, they love us. Reveal Grand Gignol, normal summon. Um, and basically it's the same from here. We, t we do need a couple of discards. So we're going to grab us two cards, right? I think we only need one to be honest. And then branded fusion normal line bestial lubelion albaz you go into albion here which will banish now since we're gonna make granginol a little bit later in the combo you don't need to worry about albaz and grave because you will summon quem during the end phase which will guarantee it now here you get nibbed it doesn't matter you chain cartesia make a granginol Chain Mirror Jade, send another thing for, like, Nib is not real against Branded at all. Now, what's important here and different about the other combos is that you will get a Lost activation. So, Galzo, I obviously search for Mercurior here, right? Wrong. Oopsie. Wrong. You don't search for Mercurior, you search for Kit. Here. Okay, and I'll explain why. A second... And then you send Grrr, Titanic Lad. Graveyard is fully set up with Albion and Titanic Lad. This is what you want in the end phase. Cartesia is going to stay in the grave. Don't take the Cartesia back to hand ever. And this is a pro tip. Unless you need a discard specifically. You can always summon it from grave with Quem. It's better for you. Unless you have zero cards in hand and need one card. That's fine. If you have one card in hand, don't take this back. You might need it to summon it from the graveyard. So, why did we search kit? It's one more interruption to your end board. If you went through this line, right? You can special summon the kit now and search for retribution. Okay, bring back the other card. You still have one more card in hand. This is gonna be an additional interruption on your end board, which will also shuffle back your fusions from grave, which is great. You will fuse in your opponent's turn anyway, so you keep the lost search for Mercurier to your opponent's turn, okay? Now, this is one scenario. The other scenario is that I've already sent Retribution to the graveyard somehow by a card effect. I drew it and discarded it for opening. I discarded the Serenir and sent it. I had an Albion that already sent it to the graveyard to draw a card, whatever. But this is the scenario. So here, you're going to be activating the kit, but the difference is, if you already have Retribution in Grave, you're going to be chaining Retribution. Retribution now on Resolution will add Branded Fusion to hand. Kit on Resolution will add Retribution to hand. And then your Branded Fusion goes back into the deck. Okay? This is the kit line. It's insanely good. And it's better than Mercurier. You gain... A Mercurier plus this. Like, this cannot be set up on your opponent's turn, right? End phase, we have Titanic Cloud that summons Quem that dumps Albaz. Dumps Albaz. And you're going to be setting Brandon in red with Albion. Now, you should, again, have another one card in hand. So, this is what your hand essentially looks like, right? So you do have a discard for the Albaz effect. This is why you don't need to bring back the Cartesia because if you want a puppet lock during your opponent's turn, you need this Cartesia in Grave, okay? Don't be tempted to use Cartesia's effect during the end phase. It's just not worth it. Now, let's begin siding against Tenpai and we are going first, okay? So a little bit of side patterns here. Um, I would probably go for, like we want this obviously, and we also want Fusion Parasite. We want D Barrier. And we want, I think, three Imperms is fine. I don't really like siding in Cosmics because they only have one field spell. So the chances that they'll go for the field spell is probably like half as it was when it was not limited. 
right? Uh, I'll probably take the Quirtus out here. Maybe one Grand Gnoll going second. This is going to be my side pattern. And now we are assuming we got shifted, right? So draw phase, they shifter us. Now I would definitely chain the branded opening here because chaining the branded opening here allows me to at least possibly put a Lubellion engrave or just an Albaz, right? Just an Albaz. Put something engraved before the shifter resolves. A Luber is gonna end up here. This is gonna be banished. Now a Luber is gonna, unfortunately we have duplication in hand, which you know can trigger here and Lubellion. But this is the reality of the deck. This is what's gonna happen to you under shifter. Now we get ashed here and we pass. No, just kidding. We go for this and we go for this. Fusion Parasite, Rebellion. This is banished. This, honestly, like you could just banish this. It doesn't really matter. And then we go for our Fusion Parasite and you could leave the Lubellion here. You could leave it and just shuffle the other Albaz. Now, you don't really know what's the, what, what are the other cards in your hand, essentially. And this is going to be our end board with this specific hand. Like, it will be without these two cards if we only had a Luber or Branded Fusion. And sometimes with this deck, it's Brage, right? But I found that this is really good. Put it in defense. It gains a thousand attack and defense for each monster. Dragon monster your opponent controls are in the graveyard. Okay, so think about it. They summon Pydra, it's already 3,500 defense. They summon Red, it's 450. And each time it accumulates because the, in this case, they're not going to have it in the graveyard because of Shifter. So it's only going to be on the field. But in another scenario, this could also be used as a board breaker. You summon this from deck, there are spheres and there are Pydras and everything is just negated once this hits the board. So we haven't even talked about what this does. Change all dragon monsters your opponent controls to defense position. Also, dragon monsters in your opponent's possession cannot activate their effects. Once this is summoned, this is an immediate effect that applies. It is not, it's not possible to chain to it. It is basically like Baguska for dragons. So everything goes to defense. They cannot attack you and they cannot activate their effects. So no spheres, not even cost. You can't even pay the cost to activate the effect. This is going to be the shifter line. This is going to be it for the Rage of the Abyss. I think this was a great episode. I think it is very, very clear how you're supposed to play Branded. And I would like to hear you guys in the comments below letting me know what are the other gaps in knowledge you have for this upcoming format. Again, you can always join the Discord to participate in the discussion and deck building that we do over there. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description below. It's completely free. Thank you so much for hanging out. This was a great episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.